Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about something called the oven thermostat. And um, this is a pretty interesting invention or um, engineering concept that uh, it's not just applicable to an oven. So basically this sort of goes for all kinds of thermostats that work through metals. But uh, in most cases, back in like the 40s um, and 50s, this would be used a lot in ovens um, where people want to regulate the temperature. So let's say they want it to be around 325 degrees. They'd be able to regulate it by using this kind of thermostat. So I'm going to get into exactly how this works. And um, really, the first thing we need to know is a basic concept in thermodynamics. And that's that metals and other kinds of materials either expand or contract based on the temperature. So for example, brass is a metal that is very susceptible to um, expansion based on temperature. So let's say, let's say this is it at seven degrees, 70 degrees. And let's say then this is it at 150 degrees. So see how it expanded a lot based on the temperature. Now we may have another piece of metal like steel, for example, or actually, even iron, where this is it at 70 degrees. And it's going to expand a little bit, but it's not going to expand nearly as much as the brass did. And this is the basic concept that we need to understand when we're going to be talking about how exactly the oven thermostat works. That depending on the type of metal, um, the expansion at certain temperatures is different. And this deals with a, uh, a coefficient called um, an object's latent heat. Uh, so this is something pretty interesting. You may have learned this in chemistry or a physics class, that um, objects have different latent heat, which is the amount of heat it takes to um, to expand it, or to, sorry, the amount of heat it takes to uh, get it to a certain temperature. Um, but, uh, I, I'm so sorry, it's not the latent heat. It's the coefficient of thermal expansion. Uh, and brass has a different coefficient of thermal expansion than iron, and for that reason, it's going to expand more. Yeah, sorry, not the latent heat. It's the coefficient of thermal expansion that we need to be worried about. Basically, you need to know brass and iron have different types. So how is this going to help us with trying to regulate the temperature? Well, I will show you right now. And uh, this concept's used a lot in thermometers, too. It's not simply in, uh, in the thermostat that this concept can be applied. So essentially, here's the main premise, right? We've got this sort of tube, okay? And um, let me sort of just draw it like this. So imagine that, uh, imagine down here, there's some gas coming out, right? And the gas is coming out and this is able to light a flame. Okay, so this is our, our little flame. And this is really what's, let's say this is the oven right here. Now the oven is hot when there's a lot of gas flowing through here to get to the oven and uh, be able to heat it up. So essentially, the way you're gonna be able to regulate this is there's gonna be a little, a little piece right here, all right? And this is going to be a sort of a rod type thing. Um, and it's going to be, imagine you just had some sort of long arm here, like a piston almost. And you could pull this in and out and sort of regulate how much gas was going in the oven. And this is going to be the main thing that controls the temperature. But in our case, what's going to be happening is this is going to be sort of curved, almost like a screw. And then it's going to be attached to a piece of iron and that iron will be attached to a piece of brass. Okay. So pretty much think about it. This is going to be the iron and this is going to be our brass. All right. So essentially what's going to happen is, uh, I'll draw it over here. Imagine the iron inside the piece of brass, and this is actually connected 
to the brass itself. Um, sort of like this. All right. So what's going to happen is if we have something here, when it heats up, the iron is really not going to expand all that much, but the brass will. So what's going to happen is the brass will expand, but the iron bar will stay the same length, pulling the thing back. So let's say this is 70 degrees and 150 again. So see, the iron bar will be able to pull. It won't expand at the same rate that the brass is. So it's able to pull something up, for example. This is like if we were doing a vertical uh, thing. So essentially what's going on here is we've got this piece of iron and brass and the iron is connecting is connected to this screw which is the thing that regulates how much temperature there is so when there's more heat let's say the oven gets really hot and uh let, let's say we wanted to let's say this the way we design the metal we want the oven to be 325 degrees fahrenheit right if it reaches above 325 then what would happen was uh well what, what would happen is that this bar, this, this brass would expand, pulling back the iron, and this bar would shut the valve so that there'd be no more gas going to the flame. So do you understand that? Basically what's gonna happen is the brass uh, is gonna expand, it's gonna go back, this iron piece will be pulled back, and it's gonna shut the valve. And then what happens, it's gonna start to cool down. So when it starts cooling down again, the brass will contract and when it gets too cold below the 325 that we wanted to set it at, um, it'll start to open up again, and then it'll allow gas to pass through here and get to the oven. Do you understand? So basically, this is how we're going to be able to regulate the temperature. So you know how I mentioned that this part right here is sort of a screw type thing? Well, that comes really in handy when we want to try to change... Because we're not always going to want the temperature to be 325, and we can't change the type of metal, you know, for each temperature. So what we end up doing is there's another screw here, and right here is a regulator. So imagine this, like, if you were to blow this up, um, it would look like a little knob here that you could sort of turn, and it would have different temperatures here. And basically, the, the amount that you turn this, you could either bring this forward or backward, and that would set a different, a different precedent for how much the brass would need to expand. So let's say that we had, um, let's say before it was here, and now you you pulled it, um, basically like it was there, but now you pulled it forward even more, so now it's here. Now it takes more brass expansion for this to shut the valve, because if the valve is right here, this one has to travel farther than this one. So this one has, that's how you set a higher temperature in the oven. Essentially, this one now has to go farther than the other one would have had to have went before. So this is pretty interesting. I mean, obviously today, we don't use this kind of system with brass and iron. We have actual temperature sensors and electronic components that can identify temperature and um, adjust the oven flame accordingly. Uh, and this is for a gas oven. So for electric ovens, obviously, it's going to be much easier. You can just regulate the voltage or something or the power uh, to change how much heat you want on your... Or sorry, that would be a stovetop. No, uh, an oven, most ovens are gas ovens. Uh, there are electric ovens, but this is a gas oven. Uh, but this concept can be applied to many different things. There's actually um, another thing called a wax motor which um, I'm probably going to be going over in the next video. But essentially how that works is um, it's we've got some wax in here. And when this expands, it can change a uh, an action. Basically, it's a wax actuator. So this can go up or down based on temperature. And uh, that can be really useful, as you can see. This is almost an actuator in itself, except this one uses um, iron and brass as opposed to uh, using wax. Uh, but wax is pretty expensive. So... Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. This has a lot of applications. It's quite good, even though it's a very old technology. Not too old, um, but it has been around since the 19th century or so. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to like and subscribe.